We all know that we're going to pass away at some point in time, but I think the underlying assumption for most of us is that it's going to be when we're old and grey and just can't be bothered getting out of bed. But the harsh reality is, a lot of people pass away before this happens. So I want you to sit here with me today for five minutes, face the harsh reality of life, and let's work out if you need some death cover. Because when it comes to your insurances, you should always plan for the worst, but expect the best. Hello guys, Brad here from The Guided Investor. Welcome back to the channel where I help you do more with your money. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to protect your financial position in the event of death. Now obviously, you personally aren't gonna care about your financial position when you're dead, but it's more about planning for your loved ones, making sure you don't leave them in a sticky financial situation. So let's jump in. Broadly speaking, if you have debts and dependents, then you need some level of death cover. The amount of death cover you need is gonna be unique to you because everyone's financial situation is a little bit different. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to calculate your level of death cover and I'm gonna do it the same way that I do it for my clients. Okay, so to kick things off, I want you to write down every single debt that you have. Include things like mortgages, car loans, credit cards, every single debt. Next, I want you to consider, is there anyone in your life that relies on your income to meet their living expenses? So for instance, do you have a spouse or kids? If the answer is yes, then you need to consider how they're gonna continue meeting their living costs if you're no longer around. Maybe your spouse or partner will be fine as they can increase their working hours, but if not, you need to allow for some income replacement. So next, I want you to list how much you wanna leave your loved ones for income replacement. So this might be 30,000 for two years, 50,000 for 10 years, or 100,000 for seven years. I don't know, it's completely up to you and your situation. Next, I want you to allow some money for funeral costs. So you might be the type of person that wants a big old send off where you can have food, wine, and a hedgestone as big as the Eiffel Tower. In this instance, you're gonna want to leave quite a bit of money to cover all these expenses. On the other hand, if you're a very simple person where all you want is a small send-off in a cardboard box, then you should leave a minimum of, say, $10,000. Hey, Hank, you can't just walk in here and distract my video, mate. You can't just come in here and distract my video. So we've covered off the big items that apply to most people. We've covered off debts, we've covered off income replacement, we've covered off funeral costs. Next, it's time to consider those unique items that apply to certain situations. For example, do you need to leave money for education, childcare, accrued tax liabilities, housing? Have a think about any expense that's gonna pop up in the future that you would like to leave some money for and list all of these additional items now. Rightio, so we have all of the expenses that you want to allow money for if you were to pass away. Now what we need to do is consider what assets you already have that will be sold in the event of your death to cover some of these expenses. So the first and most obvious one is your superannuation. If you were to pass away, your superannuation is going to get paid out to your nominated beneficiary. So make sure that you have an up-to-date nomination of beneficiary on your super funds. And this means that in our calculation, we can subtract your super balance from the amount of money that you need if you were to pass away. You might also have an investment property which you would sell down or cash at bank which you would use if you were to pass away. Now we're only listing those things that you're willing to use in the event that you were to pass away. If you wanna keep an asset for your family, then don't include it here. For instance, if you did have an investment property and we paid out the debt and we allowed enough death cover to pay out the debt, but you wanted to retain that property to help cover living costs for your family, then you wouldn't include that property here. Does that make sense? If you have a principal residence and you have a family, then you probably don't want to include it here either, because if you were to pass away, your family's still gonna need somewhere to live. However, if you're single with a principal residence and there's no one that you really want to leave it to, then by all means, this property could be sold down to pay out debts and funeral costs and things like that, and you might not need any death cover at all. Once you know exactly how much you need and how much you already have, simply subtract one from the other and voila, you have your required level of death cover. Now that you know how much death cover you need, the next step is to work out how to structure your insurances tax effectively and go around and quote the market to find the most appropriate provider. I won't go over these steps in this video because it's gonna be way too long, but I will do a future video 
covering off these things. For a little case study, which I think would be interesting to see, once you've worked out your level of depth cover, leave a comment down below with just a number stating how much depth cover you need. I think it'll be really interesting for people to see just how much the level of death cover is going to vary from person to person. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this video then please leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you in the next one.